High quality bar clamps that are long can be kind of expensive. On this episode of DIY Man, I'll show you how to build these that are four foot long for about $8 a piece. But these can be built to any length for about a dollar a foot more. And these are really awesome because they sit upright on their own. And this can be really handy when you're clamping some of your bigger projects. Today, I'm going to be making the bar out of some 14 gauge 1 inch square tubing. For each clamp, I'm going to cut one piece that's 48 inches long. If you want longer clamps, all you have to do is cut this piece to a longer length, then drill additional holes which I'm about to show you how to do. Let's make a mark every 4 inches on that bar we just cut. Then we'll drill a 5 16 hole on each one of those marks. Now you can totally just drill these out like you see me doing here with the 5 16 drill bit. But if you're having difficulty getting these right in the center of your square tubing, try pre-drilling with a smaller drill bit first. Then we'll just come back and chase that with the 5 16 drill bit. These holes you see here are going to be on the bottom of our bar clamp. For this next part, I'm going to cut up a small piece of 3 inch strapping. On one side, I'll measure over 3 and a half inches. Then I'll mark 4 inches over on the other side. Let's draw a line connecting those two marks. Then we'll cut this piece out. We actually need two of these pieces, so I'm going to use this one as a template to mark what the other one should look like. Then I'll just cut that one out too. Once we cut those out, let's take a piece of one inch strapping and cut two pieces that are three inches long. Now we're going to make a couple angled pieces on this one inch strapping. Mark four inches down, then angle this down at a 45 degree angle. Let's cut this piece out real quick. Once again, I'm going to use this one as a template. I'm going to cut another one out just like this one. We need two of these. Let's take just a minute to pull out a grinder and clean off all the burrs off of these pieces before we move on. Let's take a quick look at all these completed pieces before we start assembling our bar clamp. To make sure things are nice and loose, I'm going to use a scrap piece of 20 gauge steel as a spacer. Let's clamp those two large pieces of 3 inch strapping with that spacer in between them to the sides of a scrap piece of 1 inch square tubing. To make this easy to weld, I've got those two flat ends sticking up in the air right now. Then I'll weld this 3 inch piece of 1 inch strapping between these two pieces. Here I'm just going to take a quarter inch drill bit and drill a hole a quarter inch away from this edge. This might be kind of difficult to see, but this is on the four inch side of that three inch strapping. Let's take out one of these spoon shaped shelf support pins I got from Home Depot. Let's stick this in the hole and weld this in with the flat end sticking out. Let's grind this piece down a little bit so this bottom edge is flat. Next, I'm going to take this other 3 inch piece of 1 inch strapping and I'll drill a 3 8 inch hole a half inch from one side.
Once that's complete, I'll do a little welding on this piece. I'm going to put a 3 8 inch nut on the side where the hole is. You'll want to take your time here and make sure this nut is aligned perfectly on that hole. We want to make sure that a bolt can pass through this hole, that way our clamps work properly. Then I'm going to take these two angled pieces of 1 inch strapping and weld them to the end here. Probably the most important part of this is making sure those holes we drilled in this square tubing earlier are facing down right now. These holes are what's going to allow us to latch our bar clamp adjustment into place. Once those are welded on, we'll install this piece with the nut. A lot of people ask me what kind of welding rods I use. These are 6010, which are really good for basic farm welding. I know that 7018 is kind of the preferred rod for most people. But I like these because they're easy to strike when you're hanging by your toenails from a tall project you're welding on. Now I know this is going to be barbaric for most of you pro welders out there, but I'm just going to clean this up with a grinder real quick. I'm not trying to show off my welds or anything today, I just want a smooth finish on these bar clamps. Now I'm going to use one of these 3 8 inch torque washers. These cost me less than 50 cents. I'll weld one of these 3 8 inch nuts to the back side of one of these as well. These are going to be used to create the pads for the clamps. This color red is probably my favorite color of all time. While that's over there cooling, let's cut out a piece of 3 quarter inch oak. I'm using a 1 and 3 quarter inch hole saw to cut out a piece that I can use as my pad. This guy's kind of ugly, but it's nothing a little sandpaper can't fix. Now we'll attach this torque washer with a welded nut to the back of this piece. Here I'm just marking where this piece needs to go by hitting it with a hammer. Then I'll pre-drill these holes a little bit before I attach this with an epoxy. This is the same Gorilla Glue epoxy you may have seen me use on some of the other projects I've made. This little bench vise makes it easy to smash this piece on. And I'll just put a little bit of epoxy on the top as well. For this next part, I'm using a scrap piece of 1 inch oak. In fact, this is actually a scrap piece of stair tread. Then I'll lay out my bar clamp with the adjustment pad installed in one of those holes. Then I'll set my piece of 1 inch wood inside of this and trace it out. For me, I want this oak piece to stick out a half an inch past this adjustable bar. So I'll put a mark at a half an inch on this side instead. Let's go ahead and cut out this piece. Now on this long flat part, let's measure a half inch up from the bottom on the long side. Then I'll draw a line from that mark to the bottom on the opposite corner. Then we'll cut this piece on this line. This particular cut on the bottom of this piece of wood is going to allow us to slide our adjustable part of the clamp forward and back. Once that's complete, let's take a piece of our one inch scrap wood and cut a piece that's one inch wide.
Next, I'll cut that piece to three and a half inches long. Next comes kind of a tricky part because I can never hold the drill straight. I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch hole through the length of this board. Okay, not perfect, but that's okay. This is just going to be a handle. Let's sand this piece down a little bit. For this next part, I bought some 3 8 inch carriage bolts that are 8 inches long. I'll apply some epoxy to this shank here, then I'll install this in that hole I just drilled out. Once all my epoxy dries, I'm going to give all these wood pieces another good sanding. Next, I'll drill a few small holes in my adjustable pad, that way I can attach that wood piece. I had these little half inch screws laying around, let's try these out. Hey, this is starting to look like something. Let's pull these back apart and apply a little spray paint. Once the paint dries, it's time to reassemble these. I'm pretty excited about my new clamps. I've been looking at different ways to build adjustable clamps like this for a while now. I didn't like a lot of the designs I saw out there, so I thought I'd come up with my own design. And these work really well, and I hope to be using these on a lot of my future projects where I need to use big clamps. I really hope you enjoyed today's build. If you did, be sure to hit that like button for me. And if you like DIY videos like this one, be sure to subscribe so you can catch the next one as soon as it comes out. Thanks for watching DIY Man and keep hitting that I Believe button.